Well, hey guys, in today's video, we are gonna be talking about treatment options to improve the appearance of enlarged pores. Everything from topical treatments all the way to all the different types of lasers that can improve the appearance of pores. There are three main factors that contribute to the appearance of enlarged pores. Increased oil production from the associated sebaceous gland, loss of elasticity surrounding the pore. Third is the size of the hair follicle. Now there are a ton of things that can affect these three factors. With age, we lose elasticity in our skin skin and that contributes to dilation of the pore opening. The second, of course, is genetics. Third is hormones, which influence the rate of oil production. And that may be influenced by, say, the menstrual cycle, maybe a certain underlying endocrinologic disorder like polycystic ovary syndrome. Uh, males tend to have oilier skin and more prominent pores. Ethnicity can influence pore size as well. And sun damage. UV rays from the sun, they damage the deeper layers of the skin. You lose that supportive framework along with elasticity and that leads to dilation of the pore opening. Let's start with oral medications. Isotretinoin, otherwise known as Accutane, is arguably the most potent inhibitor of sebum production. And as a result, you can appreciate diminished pores. Patients who take Accutane, they may also derive benefit from layering on some different procedures to further improve the appearance of pore size. Intense pulse light can improve collagen production in the deeper layers of the skin. It can thicken the epidermis. So those two things really can help keep that pore opening quite narrow. It also can improve discoloration, pigmentation, and it improves skin texture. The appearance of enlarged pores can significantly be improved by just intense pulse light alone, but intense pulse light plus Isotretinoin gets you even further benefit, likely because intense pulse light is helping to stimulate collagen and epidermal thickening, whilst isotretinoin is helping to cut down on that increased oil production. Those two factors together really help in diminishing pore size. Another add-on for those who have been on Accutane and appreciated some improvement in pore size is the 1565 nanometer non ablative fractional laser. This emits in wavelengths that target the sebocytes. Those are the cells that make up your oil gland and it destroys them ultimately giving you even more results in terms of improving the appearance of pores. You also have oral contraceptive pills, specifically combined oral contraceptive pills that have an estrogen component. You see estrogen has a negative effect on sebaceous gland activity and being on combined oral contraceptive pills, those which include an estrogen component can certainly help to improve the appearance of pores, diminish oiliness, and it also helps with the hormonal component of acne. Another oral medication that targets the hormone Hormonal component of acne, which also can diminish the appearance of pores, is spironolactone. It has an anti-androgen effect, and ultimately that's going to help with reducing oil output from that sebaceous gland. Of these three medications that we've talked about, I have more videos that go into detail all about side effects. Check those out if you want to learn more about these medications. I have a video all about the best types of birth control pills for acne. Moving away from oral medications, let's transition to topical things that you put on your skin. Gotta give a shout out to retinoids, prescription retinoids like tretinoin or tazeratine or the over-the-counter adapalene. These can certainly help diminish the appearance of pores simply by helping the cells that line the pore behave more appropriately to reduce pore clogging. You see, when you get pore clogging, that inevitably is going to dilate the pore appearance and that plug, when it gets exposed to air, it oxidizes and turns black. That's why you get a blackhead, otherwise known as an open comedone. Retinoids, they certainly can help minimize the formation of those. Ultimately, that has the effect of diminishing the appearance of pores and pore size. Then you have azelaic acid. I recently did a video going into detail regarding the benefits of azelaic acid. It's a compound naturally present on everyone's skin. It's actually a treatment for not only acne, but hyperpigmentation and rosacea. And it's a very mild exfoliant. People who use topical azelaic acid, they do find that their skin feels less oily and they often will appreciate an improvement in the appearance of pores. There's not good research, however, on azelaic acid specifically for improving the appearance of pores, but it's definitely something that you can observe with azelaic acid. Then you have salicylic acid, an over-the-counter acne medication, commonly referred to as BHA or beta-hydroxy acid. And this is a great ingredient for tackling pores because 
because it actually localizes within the pore to exfoliate it. But here's an ingredient that pops up everywhere that you certainly should give a try because it's readily available, and that is niacinamide. Niacinamide, I've got videos on, it's in everything these days. Face washes, creams, serums, shampoo, conditioner, countertop spray. It's one of my favorite ingredients as I joke about it. It's great for hyperpigmentation, redness. It's good for the skin barrier. It can help reduce transepidermal water loss, ultimately keeping the skin more hydrated. But it's also been shown to improve the appearance of pores and to help diminish oiliness, possibly because it's an antioxidant. There's another ingredient though that does not get any air time. I just don't see it in very many products and that is kynetin. This is a compound that is actually a plant growth hormone. It's an antioxidant and applied topically, it has been shown to diminish the appearance of pores, particularly in conjunction with niacinamide. Again, how that works, hard to say. Probably because it's an antioxidant and it likely has anti-inflammatory effects. It's also an ingredient that is thought to possibly inhibit the formation of advanced glycation end products. And if you recall from my videos, advanced glycation end products, they are part of the aging process. And that's a key aspect of what drives wrinkle formation actually, is the accumulation of advanced glycation end products. There's some evidence that kynetin may help in inhibiting glycation, probably because it's an antioxidant. It may help in inhibiting that. So that's another possible mechanism. And, and the downstream effect of that with regards to pore size is gonna be that it helps in that support around the pore to prevent dilation, which happens largely as a result of sun damage and the aging process. Alpha hydroxy acids, these are a little different in comparison to salicylic acid in that they are not so oil loving. So they don't really go to the pore per se. Alpha hydroxy acids, they do have some benefit for the deeper layers of your skin. They can improve collagen and the supportive framework. So possibly that is a key aspect of how they may work. Again, there's not a ton of data for them in terms of improving the appearance of pores. But there is some research to suggest that alpha hydroxy acid peels can lead to improvement in pore size. Moving away from things that you put on your skin to energy-based devices like lasers. Now in the realm of lasers, you have ablative lasers, which actually destroy the top layer of the skin in a controlled fashion, the epidermis. And then you have non-ablative lasers, which bypass the epidermis and just target the deeper layers of the skin, less downtime. The way fractional CO2 lasers works is it ablates the epidermis and it heats the underlying dermis to create microthermal treatment zones that stimulate healing and recovery and regeneration and repair pathways that lead to improvement in collagen. And CO2 laser, because it's leading to improvement in collagen and, and the dermal architecture, ultimately that will smooth out and diminish pore size. Another fractional ablative laser is the Erbium YAG laser. Now in contrast to the fractional CO2 laser, this one is a little bit more superficial in terms of the thermal treatment zone, but uh, it certainly can, in a very similar way, improve pore size as well by stimulating those collagen pathways. But both procedures are ablative lasers, meaning they do create destruction in the epidermis, so there's gonna be some downtime with that. But then you also have fractional non-ablative lasers that uh, heat down in the dermis to stimulate collagen production and improve elasticity. Ultimately, that's gonna help with the supportive framework around the pore. An example of one of these lasers is the Q-Switch 1064 Indy YAG laser. Then there's the non-ablative fractional 1440 nanometer laser, effective for diminishing the appearance of pore size. It creates little micro injury zones in the epidermis and the dermis to stimulate healing and repair. Ultimately, that's going to improve collagen and elasticity. As a reminder, there's not a ton of research in terms of improving pore size. Then you have something called the Q-Switch Indie YAG laser that actually can improve pore size, but it seems its its real potential seems to be in improving oiliness. And that's gonna have a great effect, maybe in a younger demographic where the main issue is oiliness governing in large pore size. Whereas for an older patient or somebody who just has a lot more sun damage and destruction of that deeper layer, a 
a fractional CO2 resurfacing laser is likely going to get them better results in terms of diminishing pore size. You also have ultrasound. Ultrasound works by creating little foci of coagulation on tissues, and the end result is stimulation of collagen production and elastogenesis, feeding into that supportive framework aspect of things. Now, I have videos talking about radio frequency. Radio frequency actually can improve pore size. It can target uh, the supportive framework and improve collagen, but it also can reduce sebum output, oil output. So you get two mechanisms from one treatment. So those are the energy-based devices, but one treatment that I actually have a video talking about in, in detail, but we're going to revisit it. It's Botox. Botox can actually be pretty effective for diminishing the appearance of pore size. And the way it's thought to work is that it inhibits the acetylcholine receptor on sebicides. Those are the cells that make up the oil gland and the end result is less oiliness. So you get improvement in pore size by virtue of targeting the oil production piece of things. That acetylcholine receptor on the oil gland, it's key for lipid production within that cell and that's what leads to oiliness. But uh, Botox inhibits that receptor puts the brakes on that signaling and you get less oiliness. And you may be wondering like, okay, I get Botox for wrinkles, you're injecting in certain specific areas, but you've got pores everywhere. How exactly are you gonna pursue Botox for diminishing the appearance of pores? Well, there's a technique called micro Botox or meso Botox, basically involves taking Botox in dilute strengths, di diluting it out and injecting micro droplets into the uh, more superficial dermis. And this actually can have an effect of not only diminishing pore size, but just smoothing out the skin surface. It improves skin tone, skin texture, seborrhea, but it actually lasts anywhere from three all the way up to seven months. Okay, so that's a lot of information we just covered. Where do you go from here in terms of improving the appearance of pore size? I suggest seeing a board certified dermatologist for evaluation. No single treatment is going to be right for everybody. And when it comes to diminishing pore size appearance, you probably get best results with a few different treatments, or you might. Again, it's gonna vary from person to person. If you have acne, I of course suggest seeing a board certified dermatologist, but the oral medications that I talked about, as well as uh, many of the topicals that we talked about, they are actually acne treatments. Taking a step back though, another way to think about this is by age. For a younger demographic that still has good collagen and good skin elasticity, uh, you may want to lean more into things like the topicals that we talked about. And then if there's acne, the oral medications targeting the acne, um, isotretinoin, oral birth control pills, especially if there is a hormonal issue going on, that's going to be more important uh, for women at least. Uh, especially if you have an underlying endocrinologic disorder like polycystic ovary syndrome, then for sure oral contraceptive pills and or spironolactone, both of those are gonna address the sebum production, which is ultimately gonna help improve pore size. And then the meso Botox is something that has become popular in younger people, just seeing an overall improvement in skin tone, texture, smoothness. Now for an older demographic, the oiliness piece of things may not be really what is driving the prominent pore size at all. You know, with age, we don't make as much sebum. And in the case of uh, prominent pores in an older demographic, it's likely more related to sun damage, age-related loss of collagen elasticity, in which case, Sure, niacinamide and topicals may be beneficial, but here really what you're looking for are energy-based treatments that address the sun damage, like fractional ablative laser, CO2 resurfacing, possibly radio frequency, because again, it does have the benefit of not only improving oiliness, but also improving collagen, maybe ultrasound, energy-based devices. All right, y'all, so that's an update on treatment options for enlarged pores. I hope this was informative to you. Having prominent pores, that's not a physical defect. It's nothing to be ashamed of. If it bothers you seriously cosmetically and you're motivated to pursue something to, to change it, that's fine. 
but you don't have to change it. Don't feel like you have to change it. You know, marketing and ads and things always throwing poor blurring this and all of the filters that people use on social media. I think people feel really horrible if they notice a pour and trust me, it's a hundred percent normal to have pores and don't feel bad about them. Don't feel like you have to pursue things to change them. These are merely the options that are available. If you are seriously bothered by their appearance, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. You don't want to miss this next video that I'm going to link on the end slate. It's all about how isotretinoin and Accutane can have anti-aging effects. So definitely check that out. But if you guys like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.